Baalbek is a pretty amazing ancient megalithic site, and I believe that it was built by fallen angels and giants, which are the offspring of fallen angels anyhow, and I believe there is evidence for this. Baalbek is in the Becca Valley, and it shows that there has been habitation there for eight to, thou eight to 9,000 years. Now, Baalbek was part of Egypt and Syria, but the Romans annexed it and could have been there as early as the time of Caesar, but were there from around 15 BC to 193 AD, or the time of Caesar, which was about 100 BC. Now, the Romans built the Temple of Jupiter and the Temple of Bacchus on the ruins of Baalbek, but the foundations of Baalbek are believed to be much older, and we don't see the same type of stonework that we see in the Romans building that we see in the foundation building. Now we know that Satan and the fallen angels were thrown down to the earth. Romans 12, 7 through 17, part of that says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So Satan and his angels are here on earth, and we and Satan is the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. We also know that giants were created through the offspring of fallen angels and earth women mating. Genesis 6.4, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God, the fallen angels, came into the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became the mighty men of old, men of renown. Now if we look at some of the architecture of Baalbek, the Romans built the temple of Bacchus, the god of wine, where when we look at some of the architecture of how he's depicted, he is depicted as a giant. We see him next to other humans who are much smaller than him, or him resting his arm on the head of humans. So I believe that this is something that is passed down, a myth of something that was real, which were the giants. And we know the giants were real, just like David killed Goliath. So one of the temples there is to Bacchus, who I didn't see anything about them claiming he is a giant, but the architecture, for some reason, shows that he is. Now I'm going to go over the stones that are in question and also some of the carvings that are found there at Baalbek that show what I believe to be giants, fallen angels, and demons. Now Baal or Baal is in itself a false god, a god that in the Bible was warned to not worship. Also that's who Elijah, when he went against the prophets of Baal, they prayed all night and did all their whatever ceremonies with to Baal to for a sign, got nothing. Elijah by himself called fire down upon the mountain through God, who that's where the true power is. So we know Baal is an ancient god, a false god, and so this place is therefore already got that tie to it. Now first we'll show some of the pictures of the weird creatures that are carved there into the stones at Baalbek. There are strange horned creatures such as this, looks to me as if it would be some sort of demon, giant maybe, fallen angel. I mean, a place where there's evil worship to false gods, I'm sure there's weird apparitions and this is a time of the world where very strange things like this were going on. And that time will come again, read the book of Revelation. So we see that horned creature, which is strange. We also see this winged creature fallen angel possibly ephesians 6 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places these are the types of things that they worship ball in it in himself itself whatever is one of these principalities and spiritual wickedness and they would worship them in high places and build these altars and places of worship to these false gods on high places mentioned over and over and over again in the Bible. So there's that. There's also these strange baby winged creatures that we see here holding serpents, it looks like, but hard to tell. Strange though. So there are some strange carvings there of things that seem to be demonic or of that nature. And we see a lot of that in the old times and antiquity. But that's because they were worshipping these false gods, and some people in the world still do and still believe in these things. And so there was a connection there that these 
ancient people were having with these principalities and with that spiritual wickedness. And that's how these ancient megaliths were built with that connection between those fallen angels and their offspring of giants. Which would bring us to the most clear evidence, in my opinion, of why that is how these places were built. We look at the Baalbek Trilithon. Huge, huge, huge stones placed on the foundations here. And if you look at this image, you can clearly see that the stones on top were built completely differently than these ones. I mean, they're colored differently. Even the huge stones beneath those are carved different. You can tell that the ones on bottom look as if they were by a certain people creating them. And the ones on top are completely different. It is pretty clear to see the difference. Here is another picture of the stones showed just how huge they are and which ones they are separately. And here's in comparison with some people sitting on top. So I find it to be impossible that human beings could move these stones into place 18 feet off the air, 800 ton stones without technology and the knowledge that the fallen angels brought to the earth. The gods of old that were worshipped. Same as in Egypt. Here's people on a nice island in Indonesia moving a stone in 1915. The same type of way that the mainstream narrative tells us these stones in Baalbek were moved. There's a lot of people here moving this tiny, obviously heavy and big, but nothing, absolutely nothing. It's like a pebble in comparison to Baalbek stones. I find it impossible that these stones at Baalbek were moved with that method. There is no possible way. In the ancient astronaut theory is a complete lie of hell. Anybody who would do the research to see the encounters people have with demons and the encounters people have with aliens are extremely similar. That's a totally different topic, but if you looked into it, you would find that to be the truth. So a place which is named after a false god, still named that today, a false deity which God himself warned the people then, and it's a forever warning to not worship that false god, that is what this place is referenced to. And then when the Romans moved in, they continued the same type of deal, building the Temple of Jupiter and the Temple of Bacchus, more false god worship. So this place is surrounded with a worship to false gods, and that type of of involvement in an area is what brought on what I believe to be these fallen angels and the giants who were there and built the foundations to this megalithic site. Another pretty interesting thing that I have come across is that Baalbek they have what looks to be a woman or something like that in this design which looks to be which well it is the Star of David. And the Star of David is said to have been started to been used around the time of the 12th century and 11th century. And so these images at Baalbek are way before, way before that. So it's interesting to see that the Star of David is here at Baalbek. And yet that is the thing that has been claimed for Israel and what has been used. And there's other people who have documented its, its origins to have not been from what everyone believes it to be. Everyone believes it to be a good thing, but... It very well may not be. Now, someone I saw in another Baalbek video that I have that they said, oh, those stones were cemented in place and created there. But that is clearly not the case because there is stones that have been quarried near there that haven't been moved yet that were just there ready to be moved. So that is just obviously right off the bat. I just wanted to touch on that. But, and there's also... This stone, which is called the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, which is just massive, sitting in place, wasn't moved yet. So I don't, I don't see the Romans to have l left that there. They obviously did a lot of work there. And with all the work that have gone into making that stone, why would they just leave that there? Makes no sense. Maybe something happened that wiped those people out at the time that they were building Baalbek and the foundations of it. Maybe the flood of Noah. So this place of worship of many false gods, which still holds the name to the false god Baal, Baal, which God warned us against, is evidence, in my opinion, that these things were moved and there and created by fallen angels and or giants. 
There is no explanation to some of these megalithic sites, and Baalbek is one of those places where the mainstream narrative of ropes and pulleys just makes absolute no sense. And that's my take on Baalbek with the evidence that I see using the Bible as my main compass to all things in life, including how these ancient sites were built, because it's unexplainable any other way, in my opinion. And I will leave you with this Bible verse, Zephaniah 1.4. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the name of the Chimerians with the priests. That is what the Lord God views of Baal or Baal. That's my take on Baalbek. I'd love to visit that place and check it out. It's in a dangerous region of the world, but some pretty incredible looking stuff there. It'd be cool to see with your own eyes. Hope you found this interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and God bless.